Hello again and welcome to another edition of Shed Talk. Uh, I hope you all had a very uh, good Easter and had uh, a nice long break over it. For those of you in the UK, of course, we've had um, an extra two days off. So it's Bank Holiday, oh, Good Friday and Bank Holiday uh, Monday. So it's plenty of time to spend uh, with your birds. And as it happened, the weather wasn't too bad. Uh, in this video, I'm going to look at how I personally in my shed uh, split up the uh, a pair of budgerigals. So once I finish breeding, what I do about splitting them up. I must admit, when I first started out, this was always one of those dilemmas. And even now, um, it causes me some angst when I'm uh, splitting a, a pair up from uh, breeding. So that's what we're going to look at and focus mainly on in this video. We'll also have a look at how I use the spot on treatment because I, I always give them a dose of spot on uh, when they finish breeding as well as just before they start breeding. So I'll show you um, once again how I particularly do that, how I, how I uh, use that treatment on the birds. And then finally we'll have a run round of all of the current breeding cages just to see um, or quick update on how they're doing. I know I did it in the last video but uh, um, it's always nice to have a look and see and we've got some tips to show you as well. So um, I will get on with showing you how I split the pairs but as always if you do enjoy the video don't forget to like um, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want early notifications then do hit the bell that means that you'll get notifications on uh, the, on YouTube when as soon as I post a new video. Uh, thanks to all those people who commented on the uh, last couple of videos and particularly the comments we had around the uh, online tool I use to record my birds. That was most appreciated. There were some issues, I think a couple of people had some issues around um, the program not being able to save, which is normally linked to pop-ups being blocked on your browser. So if you do have any problems with that, do have a look at um, the pop-ups on the browser. I do enjoy the comments, I read them all and I do try to answer most of them, so please do carry on commenting. So let's go and have a look at splitting pairs then. So here we are over at cage 4 ready to split this pair. Um, you've already seen uh, at the beginning of this video that I've taken the nest box off. What I tend to do is to turn the nest box round um, and leave both the uh, cock and the hen in the cage with the nest box still attached but with it turned round just for a couple of days. Um, I just find this settles them a bit and gives the hen, it seems to stress the hen slightly less with the nest box still being on there but uh, still being able to or but, uh, not being able to access it um, rather than just taking it off. It just, it just gives her a little bit. I, I found it just stresses her out after, uh, less. Um, I then remove the nest box after just a couple of days of it being on there. Um, and just leave the cock and the hen together. Again, um, I, you could take the cock straight out, but um, I tend to leave them both in there just for again, for just for another another couple of days, um, just to settle them down a little bit, and then I will remove the cock bird. So what I will do now is I'll remove the cock bird uh, from the cage. Uh, put it into a, a show cage and just do a quick assessment in terms of its condition. Make sure it's not looking, um, or that it is looking reasonably well and reasonably fit, given that it's been in the breeding cage for a little while. Um, while I'm doing that assessment, we'll talk a little bit about um, when we split pairs and some of the dilemma that that produces for me in my shed. So there's the cockbird in the show cage. Um, he looks in, in reasonable condition to me but I'll have a good look at him um, when I'm doing his spot on treatment which we'll go, which we'll go through shortly. Um, but while we're looking at this cock bird let's talk a little bit about when we might split birds up. The obvious one is at the end of the breeding season. So when the um, cock bird, sorry, when the breeding season comes to a close, I like most people I suspect uh, breed for a set period of time. For me that starts in September normally finishes at the beginning of June. That gives me time to have got all of the chicks weaned uh, prior to going on holiday and then I haven't got people worrying about breeding cages who are looking after the birds. So uh, you'll need, clearly need to work out work back from the time when you want all the pairs split uh, to the last safe time for laying, or laying the eggs and then obviously hatching 
wean in and so forth so um, that's one time the next time is when you when the pair um, has a disaster in their spots like we had with the cockbird dying and all those chicks dying clearly at that point there's pointless keeping the hen down you might as well give her a rest because it might be her that's causing the problems in terms of the stress of breeding may be that uh, her producing the virus that's killed everything um, so that's the time to split them there as we've done in this pair our pair four cock is getting a bit excited there as with this pair our pair four um, we're going to split them just because the hen seems to have had enough um, and that's what we've done here we split the birds there um, another time when you might split them and I know some people do this is they have a set number of rounds that they will give the bird so they'll they'll give them two maybe three rounds and then they'll split them uh, this can cause you some dilemma because sometimes if if you've got a pair that's producing real top quality chips round after round and seem to be ready to go again then the question is why split them because when you put them back together again may, maybe um, in three or six months time um, they might not produce anything you know the, the cop might not be fertile anymore the hen might not come back into condition so it is a bit of a dilemma and I know there are mixed views on that uh, so you could just leave them going or alternatively you, you might decide to split them that's entirely down to you for me if i've got a pair that's producing a really good top quality chicks and doesn't and do seem to just keep want to breed to breed then i will just let them carry on breeding um, the next time when you might want to split and this again is a bit of a dilemma is when you've got the alternative where they've gone you know even at the end of the first round they've not produced what you expect them to produce so the chicks are not top quality and are not producing anything at all um, why let them go again if they're just going to produce uh, more rubbish so certainly if they produce two rounds and, and haven't produced the quality of chicks that you were expecting from them then that might be another time to split them so there are just a few times when you might want to split the birds um, so anyway, let's let's just think about this cock bird then. Um, I mean, apart from being overweight, um, and you could tell that when I got him out of the uh, the nest box just by holding him, he feels uh, like he's put on a bit of timber, just being inactive in the uh, breeding cage. Um, he actually looks in in fine condition. I can't see anything wrong with him. He, he um, hasn't got any eye problems that I can see. And it's really active, desperate to get out of this uh, showcase. What I'm going to do now then is take him out of this showcase and just do some spot on treatments. In terms of the hen, she will remain in the breeding cage for probably another, another week. Um, and I'll talk about that um, now. Well, now we've moved the cockbird out of the breeding cage let's quickly consider um, what we do with the hen well I normally leave the hen in the breeding cage for about another two weeks or one week minimum uh, this just means gives her a chance to steady herself down she's not having to compete in the uh, hen flight for any of the food and it also means she continues to get the uh, soft food supplement that I put into the breeding cage um, it's really just a recovery period for the hen. Once um, that week or two weeks is up, I'll do exactly the same for the hen as I did for the cock. I'll pop her into a show cage, have another quick look at her, make sure that she's alright, give her the spot on treatment, and then she can go into the um, main hen flight. Well, that's the hen. So using the spot on treatment then, um, make sure you've got the bird reasonably well held in your hand so that he's not going to keep pecking you. And what you're trying to do is find a little bit of, of um, skin. The other thing I'd say is make sure you've taken the cap off before you get the bird out because it can be a bit of a pain sometimes trying to, um, particularly the hens that will bite. And what you're trying to do is find a little bit of skin between the feathers. There we go. And then it's just a small drop on the skin. I tend to rub him in a little bit 
and that's it. That's the bird done in terms of the um, spot on treatment. Um, what I, I I do this whenever I'm either putting the birds into the breeding cage or when I'm taking them out. Um, and those that are in the flight will get one at least once a year when I'm assessing them um, in the in September time prior to the start of the breeding season. So that's it. It's really simple. Um, like I say, the um, the bottle of um, uh, spot on treatment, um, you're looking for it saying uh, 0.1% in terms of the Invermectin uh, drops. So uh, that's okay for cage birds. Um, it's only a small bottle, but uh, it does last a long time because you're only putting a small drop on each of the birds. So depending on the size of your um, shed, I suppose, will depend on how much you're going to use. But like I say, um, that's just about it. That's really, really easy to use. And as I say, either just before they go into the flight um, or uh, sorry, into the breeding cage when they're coming out or at least once a year. Uh, I will sometimes do it also when the um, uh, birds come back from a major show. So as usual, then let's start with uh, cage one, which is my uh, pair 10. This pair uh, has currently laid um, five eggs. You can probably see from the nest box that the first one of those eggs is definitely clear. Uh, so I am more hopeful for the remaining eggs because this pair have definitely been uh, mating. The cockbird has been treading the hen almost every time she came out of the nest box. So I'm a bit more hopeful for this one or for the rest of the eggs. You'll notice on the uh, right hand side as we look at it of the nest box there's a separate um, uh, yellow dot. That is the dot that represents the egg we moved from cage four. Uh, you remember when we, when we looked at splitting cage four that she's still laying. So I've moved the egg into there and it's been marked with an A. If we have a look at the card, we can see that on the card, um, I've also shown this as an A and also represented the, or put on the card that it's from cage four, just to remind me. So that is uh, cage one, pair 10. So if we now consider uh, cage two, which is pair eight, um, just the same as the last time we looked at this pair, the, uh, all the eggs were clear. I'm gradually removing the eggs. Once completed, this pair will be split. So that is the uh, cage two, um, pair eight. Quick look at cage three and pair seven. Um, I hope you can see from the nest box markings. But indeed, we have some youngsters. So all the eggs were full. The first three eggs um, uh, didn't hatch. The final three eggs have all hatched, and uh, chicks are doing well. I'll take a quick look at those. So really pleased with this pair. But you may remember um, on the first round, this pair there was a bit of plucking going on, and um, all the plucking of the chicks. But all of the um, the chicks have recovered from that. Um, I will have a look at all of the chicks from all of the rounds so far in a future video and just do a quick assessment of them. So that's um, cage number uh, three, pair seven. So we'll just we will have a quick look at the chicks as well. So pleased with this particular cage. And the final two cages we've got to look at, excluding cage four that we've already looked at in terms of um, splitting that pair. 
is uh, first of all cage 5 which is my pair 12. This is the last pair to ha have gone down. Uh, the hen um, has been in the nest box. We, she tried, remember we tried her once before and she um, didn't produce anything. She has now been in the nest box um, and started to clear it. Um, but so far no eggs have been laid. So um, early days yet and it might well be that um, we'll start to see a bit more interest between the cock and the hen over the next week or two. So that is uh, pair 12, cage 5. Finally then let's have a look at um, cage 6 which is my pair 11. Uh, this pair was put down the same time as uh, pair 10 which is in cage 1. Uh, the hen went straight to the nest box, cleared it and started laying. Um, and as you can see from the uh, nest box markings, um, all the eggs that she's laid have been clear so far. And I think the rest of this clutch is also clear. I just think she went down too quick and uh, they didn't have a chance to bond or she didn't have a chance to bond with the cockbird and certainly didn't have a chance for the cockbird to mate with her. So I'm going to be more hopeful in the second round with this particular pair. So that is all of the uh, pairs looked at then. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Well that brings us to the end of a, another Shed Talks video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that quick look at how I um, split my pairs up. Do um, let me know how, how you do your, or you split your pairs up. We can all learn from each other and adapt what we do in our shed. Um, so yeah, so please do, do leave it in the comments. I've had a request to do a video on my soft food, so I'm hoping to do that in the next video, um, which will come up towards the end of April. Um, as always, do like, comment, and share the video. And until that, until the next one, please uh, do stay safe and enjoy your birds.